Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Darren Oberst. I'm the CEO of AI Blocks. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you today about um, a topic that we think is, is actually pretty cool and pretty innovative. Uh, what we're going to show you is a retrieval augmented generation, a contract analysis um, scenario, in which we're going to be extracting key values from a set of real life contracts. Um, and the novel part about this is the RAG workflow that we're going to be building is built entirely around um, smaller LLMs that we have fine-tuned um, for instruct RAG scenarios. And it's going to be running entirely locally um, on a CPU-based laptop. Now, this is an experimental initiative. Um, but you might ask, why would we even be looking to do this? Why would you want to do RAG on a laptop? And there are several reasons that we find coming up um, actually more than you might expect. The first and most obvious is that a lot of RAG scenarios involve sensitive private data. It involves key value extractions and question answering. Um, there's oftentimes a need to integrate it in a very deep way into enterprise processes. And oftentimes building up these types of use cases involves a lot of experimentation to really evaluate whether the use case is a practical fit and whether automation benefit can be brought to bear. This is where we've really seen the benefit of having some smaller instruct models that are really easy um, to run in the context um, of your own laptop privately that are going to give reasonably good results and that ultimately then can be swapped out in a production use case. Now, how to get started? Um, two, two prerequisites. Um, the first is LLMware. Um, this is a framework for developing enterprise LLM-based applications. That's the core prompting framework that we're going to be using. Um, and then second, um, transformers. Um, we actually, are, the models that we're going to be pulling from are actually hosted in a Hugging Face repository. We're going to be using transformers behind the scenes to actually help to pull down um, those models. Um, all of the code samples that we're going to go through um, are available in our GitHub repo. Again, we'd encourage you go there, spend a little bit of time. There's a bunch of other great examples and RAG recipes that you can immediately put into practice. Um, before we look at the code, um, what we're actually going to be showing is, is actually a very straightforward scenario um, and one that comes up quite commonly. Um, we're going to loop through um, a set of employment contracts. Um, we're going to parse and extract information from those contracts. We're going to filter them. And then we're ultimately going to pass a context and a question to an LLM to start extracting some key value pairs across a set of contracts. Now, one proviso that we would say up front, um, all models make mistakes. Um, especially, um, you know, with, with models, um, you know, LLMs that are going to be used in a context like this. These models are not going to be capable of providing anything like, you know, legal analysis. You should not be using it for that purpose. Um, where they've really been designed for us, as we've said, is for key value extraction, basic question answering, um, basic um, summarization capability. And as always with any of these cases, please look at your use case Please look at the very specific purpose and evaluate whether the model is going to be fit for that purpose. Now, what we're going to be using in the demo, and I just wanted to show you the assets um, that, that we're going to be using. Um, what you'll see is, is actually a, a folder path that points to a local directory, and that is the local directory. Um, like a, a, a lot of people, we, we just have a few contracts that we have sitting in a folder. There hasn't been any special preparation um, that's been done to them. In this case, it happens to be PDFs. The code will actually run exactly the same, whether it's a Word document, an HTML, whether you've put it into a PowerPoint file. Um, any type of, of document type um, doesn't matter. The, the algorithm is going to work the same way in terms of extracting the key information um, out of any of those individual documents. So we have some contracts that are sitting in a folder. The contracts themselves, as you can see, are executive employment agreements. Um, they're all based on a common template with some modifications, and they're about 14 to 15 pages each. So with that as a background, um, let me now flip over to the code. And let's start to walk through this scenario. First thing, um, we're going to be using two main classes um, within prompts um, of LLMware. We're going to use the prompt class is, is, is what's going to be doing most of the work. And then at the very end, we're going to use human in the loop which actually packages up all the output to pass it into a spreadsheet so that a human could go and, and look at and provide that sort of second level review of the output. So the code itself, um, we're, we're going to point at that folder that has those executive employment agreements. We've built a very, very simple test here of just three separate queries uh, that we want to ask. What are the names of the two parties? 
What is the executive's base salary? What is the governing law? First thing that we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a prompt object in which we're going to load the model. And I'm going to come back and explain what model uh, we're actually going to use. But we're going to use a hugging face, a train model that can, be, that can run and deploy locally um, on a laptop. We're then going to loop through um, that folder path of, of the five contracts that we have there. And then for each key value pair, um, we're actually going to run through um, three steps. The first step, and this is the one that does the most work, um, what this actually does is, is it identifies the document type, it applies the appropriate document-specific parser, it extracts um, all of the text, tables, images, and metadata. It then actually runs a separate filter of it, a, a query, based on the key that we've passed. In this case, the first one would be executive employment agreement. It looks for that key and only then passes back those chunks of the contract that map up to that key. Um, it packages it all up. It, it, it uses the context window of the model. Um, it packages up all the metadata that's associated with that. And then it's packaged as a source in the prompt. So then when we go to the second step, all we have to do is pass the question that we have. In this case, it's called the value. What are the names of the two parties? The prompt style, and we provide 30 different instructions out of the box. And then the temperature setting, and we tend to set the temperature setting lower in RAG scenarios because we're looking for more fact-based answers and probably a little bit less creativity. And then finally, once we're done with that, we're going to print out the results, we're going to clear out the source materials, and then, and then we're going to do it all over again. Finally then, at the end, once we're done with this full cycle, I'm actually going to take a look at a couple of the artifacts that we're automatically producing. One is saving the state. Um, all of this is captured as JSON dictionaries. Um, so you can pump it into a document store. You can run it into you know, other future analytics. Um, the other thing then that we're going to do is we're going to use this human in the loop that's going to take that prompt and it's actually going to extract that information and dump it to a CSV that can be useful for a human being to review. Now, the models that we're going to use, um, and you could use any model from Hugging Face. You know, all of the algorithm is designed to support any model um, that's within the Hugging Face catalog. We're actually going to select from eight RAG instruct models that, that we fine-tuned. And we're going to pick a very specific one, which is the Bling Sheared Llama 1.3 billion parameter model. Now, most of you have probably have heard of Llama. Maybe you haven't heard of Sheared Llama. Well, Sheared Llama is a hot off the presses, um, state of the art um, pruning methodology that actually takes a larger model and in effect figures out ways to prune and to capture a, a lot of the meaning of that model into a smaller package. It's a state of the art approach that's been developed at Princeton. The paper was just rolled out in the last month. And we, because we're constantly out looking at the latest in terms of the state of the art models, we immediately um, you know, started to engage with this model, put the instruct fine tuning on it. So we actually believe that this might be, you know, the state of the art, the best that you can find in terms of a leading edge model base in a very small package um, that's been fine tuned for this use case. So let's go ahead and run it. Now, the first time um, that you run this, the model is going to be pulled um, from our Hugging Face repo. It's probably going to take a couple of minutes for it to be downloaded and cached locally. Once you've gone through that the first time, though, then it is cached. And as you can see, it takes maybe 10 to 15 seconds, sometimes a little bit less than that, for the model to be loaded into memory. And now you can see it's actually starting to run through this cycle and run um, the inferences for us. What you can see, uh, it picked contract one, it extracted the first key, the second key, and the third key. And we picked these for a reason, just to be representative of the types of information that you're often looking for in a contract. You're looking for you know, names of parties, um, you're looking to extract numbers, and then oftentimes you're looking for um, a question answer, like, well, what was the governing law or what applied in this particular section? Did we use you know, the template clause one or the template clause two? Um, and what you can see is all of this is running locally um, and the answers are correct. They're, they're structurally and syntactically correct. Um, it's answering them in a fairly quick manner and it's giving us exactly the answers that we would expect to see across these contracts. Now, as I said earlier, 
This is not um, going off and figuring out you know, the meaning of the law. It's not gonna help you figure out the best practices of how you should be writing a contract. Where this is really useful for and where we see a ton of use cases is when you're trying to extract at scale specific pieces of information out of a contract. And what we wanted to show is that there actually is a potential role that even some of these smaller local-based LLMs can play. Now, oftentimes in these use cases, um, this is, is 10,000 contracts or 100,000 documents that a company is looking at. Now, just imagine this could be running in the background on commodity hardware. And then ultimately what it provides, and, and we're going to show you two outputs then. Um, one is what we call the prompt state. That's a more uh, machine consumable API driven um, type of output in JSON. And then the CSV output that was really designed for a person. So let's just quickly flip open each of these. And I'm gonna show you first the prompt state. Um, and this is automatically captured. And, and what it's reflecting here, if, if you just follow the numbers, this was every single transaction. We had three transactions times five documents. Every single transaction and all the associated metadata is actually captured here. Now, what we actually do in some of our upstream production systems is we actually put all of this in, in a MongoDB. You could put this in a database. It becomes a great way to run ongoing analytics to evaluate the accuracy of the model, um, as well as potentially taking this information and packaging your own data sets to help to fine tune the model. It includes all the metadata that you would think or want to capture from the question, the prompt, the model, the timestamp, the evidence that was provided. It provides a bibliography of the source that was reviewed. It also has placeholders then for the types of things that you would want to do in terms of providing feedback and assessing the accuracy of uh, that, that inference. Second thing then that we want to do is that's great for um, passing it from an API point of view, um, but also one, one of the most useful things in these types of exercises is to be able to dump all of this information out to a person. What we see most of the time in these types of analyses is you're actually going to be subjecting this to a human review. So you're going to have a four-eye situation. A person is going to be taking a look at this. Now imagine if you had a thousand contracts, you ran through a script like this, a human being then has all this information laid out that they can quickly evaluate before pushing this into a system of record, a contract management tool. It becomes a very, very simple way to review the answers, evaluate the evidence, and make any corrections as required. So um, this concludes. Um, that is the end of what we wanted to show you. Um, you can see we completed all of this running locally. Um, in about 84 seconds, we analyzed five contracts and extracted three keys from it. And in this case, um, all of the answers happen to be correct. Um, but as we've said a couple of times with any of these, uh, any LLM, you always should subject it to a fit for your use case and make sure that there is some oversight and review just to confirm that the model is in fact giving an accurate answer. As I said before, all of this is available in our GitHub repo. We encourage you, take the code, play with it, experiment with it, and start applying this recipe into your own um, projects. Thanks again.